Welcome to Fast Philosophy. This video is part of our Translating into Propositional Logic series and explains the punctuation of well-formed formulas. Now that we understand the vocabulary and the rules of grammar of our logical language, we must also understand the rules of punctuation before we can translate from natural language into formulas. Punctuation of well-formed formulas is required to prevent ambiguity and uses brackets which also affect the scope of the logical operators. We do not require brackets around atomic formulas because atomic formulas are unambiguous. They're unambiguous because they are the symbolic form of individual propositions. And remember that a proposition is defined as the unambiguous meaning of a declarative sentence. We do not require brackets around negated formulas either. This is because of our grammatical rule. If a formula contains the tilde, then it is well formed if and only if there is a well formed formula to the right of the tilde, which exhausts all possibility of ambiguity in well formed formulas. We do require brackets when a well formed formula contains any two place logical operator. This means that these formulas all require brackets around them. Now, conventionally, people do leave off the outermost brackets, but we'll keep them on during this series. This can help us to disambiguate and can also help us to find the main operator, that is, the operator with the largest scope. For example, this is ambiguous, as it is not clear which operator is the main operator. It's ambiguous because it could express the conjunction of P with the conditional if Q then R, or it could express the conditional of P and Q with R. And it is unclear which operator is the main operator, because either the caret is the main operator and the subformula is the if Q then R, or the horseshoe is the main operator and the subformula is the P and Q. Brackets are placed in whichever way makes the formula the most charitable translation of the natural language sentence it translates. For example, the sentence, if Plato eats honey and the queen eats honey, then Robin eats honey is a conditional where the antecedent is a conjunction of Plato eats honey and the queen eats honey and would be written with these brackets. However, the sentence Plato eats honey and if the queen eats honey then Robin eats honey is a conjunction where the second conjunct is a conditional and would be written with these brackets. 